Hi, and welcome to the third episode of Ask Cammy. This is a series where you can send me questions to my email at askcammycakes at gmail.com. should pop up on your screen now. Before I get into the questions, I want to quickly mention that it is Amazon Prime Day, which means there are deals all over Amazon Prime. If you've been following my channel in the past, you'll know that I took a sponsorship with Yode Wooden Watches because I like their products so much. I'm not going to comment too much on them other than the fact that they're a great conversation starter. I mean, even at GuardianCon, people ask me, what the hell is that thing on your wrist and how can I get one? And I mean, worst case, if you're like stranded on a desert island or something, at least you have some wood to create a fire with. Jokes. Terrible, Cammy. If you're even remotely interested, there's a link in the description that takes you to Amazon, pick out your watch, add it to cart, and proceed the checkout, and then you'll see 30% off because it's Amazon Prime Day, and that deal lasts for another... I'm gonna say six hours because I have no idea how long I'm gonna spend on this video. And I'll say the same thing every time I mention a sponsor, is that sponsors help my channel remain sustainable. So without further ado, let's start with question one. It reads... Hi Cami Cakes, hope you're doing good. I just recently subbed to you and I love watching your content and I wish I could get as good as you in Destiny, but what advice would you give to a player that is kinda new to Destiny so that they could do better in PvP? And also, what PvP modes are you playing in your vids? If Destiny 1 was a brand new game, my answer would be a little bit different. If Destiny 1 was a brand new game, you would want to experiment with each of the subclasses to find out what you really like. The more appropriate answer, though, is to look at Twitch.tv streamers, right? The ones that are good at PvP. These could be your Crafties, your Luminosities, your Wish You Lux, whatever, it doesn't matter. Look at one of them, see a subclass they play, let's say it's Sunbreaker. I want you to look at what they're doing and study it. After you have a grasp of what that subclass is capable of, you're going to spend a lot of time in the free-for-all playlist, aka Rumble, or Rumble Supremacy, unfortunately. In this particular meta, there's only a couple viable loadouts, the most popular being a hand cannon like AS Luna or Palindrome with an Icebreaker, a No Land Beyond and a sidearm such as the Wormwood or Iron Wreath, or a Pulse Rifle in the Hawksaw archetype and a sidearm. Now that you're on a usable subclass with a usable primary and special weapon, this is when you go into Rumble and start practicing your shot. Get in as many engagements as you can. Don't worry about winning or losing, winning will come with time. Trust me, I've lost like 30 matches every update, and then I go on like nearly a 100 win streak after, with the occasional games that I join in progress and then lose because I have no chance. But still, once you're very comfortable with your primary and special shot, how to use your abilities and so forth, then you can determine what kind of playstyle you want to really focus on. My playstyle in particular has changed over the years. In year one, I was a very aggressive player who didn't really care about holding hard angles and cover as much, but that's because the current meta let my primary shot get me out of a lot of situations, and snipers could straight up shoot you even though you were flinched by anything. Long story short, I was confident enough with my primary and sniper that I could even bring it into sweats and not be a detriment to my team. By the time the year 2 meta rolled around, I'd experimented with most of the weapons and subclasses in the game to where I could play pretty much anything that I wanted to. So I got a little bit bored of PvP and started going for just flashy clip plays rather than the smart play. And I eventually got good at just doing wildcard weird things. Just straight up making the wrong decision on purpose to throw off good players. My year 3 gameplay, which you'll see in the background and it'll perfectly demonstrate what I'm talking about, is more passive play, making the least amount of mistakes, making the smartest plays possible, and leaving the smallest room of error, which makes it very, very difficult for my opponents to ever have an advantage. Some would say this play, no, actually, most would say this playstyle is extremely boring, and I agree with you, but it's also the most effective. If I had to describe it in a couple words, it's if the enemy gives you an inch, take a mile. That is my year 3 playstyle. But enough about me, let's talk about your playstyle. Maybe you lean more towards an aggressive player. That's where you fit best on a team. Well great, embrace that. Go in the rumble, run at people, beeline and shoot your way out. Trust me, even in Destiny 2, I feel like that's going to be a, u a very valuable role on a team. Someone's going to have to enter the bomb site first. So once you have an idea of what playstyle you are, you got your primary weapon selected, your subclass and everything, start looking for good players. Now not players that are the best in the world if you don't consider yourself even close to that. You'll just get stomped and have no idea what's happening. In fact, there's a in-place mechanic in Destiny called skill-based matchmaking that tries its best to find enemies and opponents on your current skill level or higher. 
in this exact rumble session that you're seeing on the screen, I played a couple games last night. There was one match where everyone kept leaving because it was just one-sided domination. Like, it was going to be a sum of all tiers. So it eventually happened to where it was just me and one other guy in the lobby. And so I played him. I won. Got the sum of all tiers. And then I messaged him and said, want a rematch? Just because I thought the 1v1 was fun. And I severely handicapped myself. I used that raid pistol from... What is it? Oryx? Yeah, the Oryx raid pistol, the, you know, the one with the cocoon and the one that can't even hit the broadside of a barn in PvP. I just basically had to handicap myself a lot so it was a very fair match. And believe me, it does make me a better player because I get to practice some weird things. But it also makes the other person a better player because they get to play with a better player, but not be so much better that they have no idea what their mistakes were. So in your case, you got a couple weeks of Destiny 1 left. What you want to do is find players in Rumble that you like to play against. Play them in private matches, and depending on how big a, how big the skill gap is, one of you might have to handicap yourself, and that's totally okay. Basically, if you did everything I said in the answer to this question, you'll be ready to go when Destiny 2 PvP rolls around, especially if you take the same outlook towards Destiny 2 as you are with the remaining weeks of Destiny 1. The second question reads, Alright. So my question to you, is there any way I could possibly get some hands-on training from you? Because I would love to get better and have nobody to help me get there, and I also love your content. Well, luckily for you, I will offer coaching, just not right now. I feel a bit dirty offering coaching for an FPS game when I don't have any sort of degree or accolades that say I know what the hell I'm talking about. Luckily, I'm almost done with my college degree, which is for sport and exercise science, believe it or not, in coaching. So once I get that degree, I feel a little bit more justified giving tips and don't feel like a scumbag taking advantage of my YouTube subscribers. After I finish that said degree, I'm going to go ahead and go into sports psychology as a master's program. And what I plan to do with that, of course, is to eventually integrate into esports and to supplement myself during college. I'm going to continue with the YouTube thing and then maybe possibly raffle off some coaching as well as just offer scheduled coaching as a normal coach would. It is way too soon to even put a price on that kind of thing, and I don't feel terrible putting a price on that because of course, at that point I would have a degree in coaching. Between now and then, the closest thing you'll get to coaching for me is winning a Trez of Osiris raffle and just asking questions while we go flawless, hopefully. Question three reads, I've noticed that you as well as many other top tier players tend to rotate your right analog stick in a circle a lot, either before a match or when waiting to res. Why is this? Is this meant as an exercise or is it just fidgeting? For a lot of top tier players, this is totally psychological and is purposeful. And if it works, do it. And in some cases, doing figure eights with your controller sticks makes your shot feel crispier, so you're more confident, so you're more confident in your shots, so you hit more shots. If you hit more shots, it reaffirms that doing figure eights with my analog stick to warm up my shot and stay warm will lead to me more confidently hitting shots, so I will continue to do figure eights. Very, very simple process. The sports example I could give to this is when a basketball player is going for free throws, they might bounce the ball three times. When a tennis player is trying to serve, he might bounce the ball once before he actually serves just because that's a mental process to help him Think about what's happening next. It's a routine. It makes them calm. It makes them confident. You could also argue from a physical point of view that the act of moving a thumbstick isn't very strenuous, so the muscle could, in a sense, get cold. And even a movement such as doing a figure eight or fidgeting on your screen keeps you warm. And being warm means you'll more precisely make a movement because you're not going to be jerky like a cold muscle. But I stand more from the perspective of it's a psychological thing that works, so a player will do it. The fourth and final question of this episode reads, Hi Cami, love your content bro, keep it up. Anyway, here's a couple of questions. I wanted to ask, what made you consider this channel? Why and how do you love it? Second question is, have you ever had a different time in your life and how did you do to overcome? I presume he means, have I had a difficult time in my life and what did I do to overcome it? Luckily, those two questions actually go hand in hand with the way that I might explain it. Stay with me now. I do YouTube purely because I love it. 
In recent months though, it's actually profitable enough to be considered a part-time job, so I have to consider it as such. This doesn't detract from the fact that rhymed. It almost sounds like an album now that I think about it. Detract from the fact. MC Cakes on the mic. Okay. Um, it doesn't detract from the fact that YouTube is still a hobby in my escape from my more difficult classes and stresses of everyday life. The most difficult time in my life in recent years is geology. College geology. Of all classes, why did I struggle with geology? I was good at chemistry. I was good at biology. I was good at generic science. I pretty much had A's in all my classes, yet I was at risk of failing geology. And trust me, I tried in that class. I'll explain why I had difficulty in that class first, and then I'll explain how I overcame that. So the difficulty in that class was because the way the tests were formatted. And I know that typical excuse of a student saying, well, I'm just a bad test taker. And a lot of the cases is just, no, you don't try in the class. In this case, I tried my ass off and still failed the test despite knowing 90% of the information on the test and it was the way it was formatted. It was matching questions. So let's say question one, you had to pick five, six, seven, sometimes eight or nine answers to that question. And you had to match it out of a word bank of like 60 or 70 uh, answers. So let's say I got six out of the seven answers correct on question one. The whole question is slashed even though I knew six out of the seven answers for that. So I could go the entire test, knowing 90% of the information, yet get a 33, a 50 if I'm lucky. If you're struggling in a class the same way I was in that class, what you want to do, oh, backstab, what you want to do is do every assignment, the homework, all of that. You need hundreds on everything to make up for the bad testing. If it's a free assignment, you do it. Luckily for that class in particular, testing wasn't an entire portion of my grade. But I still didn't want to fail the class solely because of testing. So what I did was I studied my ass off, like straight up 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. in the library every single day for a week leading up to the test. And I would still do bad on the test. Like I was improving, but I don't consider a 66 on a test good. In fact, I went to the professor's tutoring sessions after we saw more than half the class was failing and asked him, okay, professor, why can I draw an entire map of continental North America and the plate shifting, the exact direction of the plates, know the entire composition of granite and all the variations and the microchemicals and minerals that make it up, yet fail your test. I don't understand. I can write the entire study guide out verbatim with every single word selection you chose, yet fail the test. Obviously something's wrong here. I'm not the only one in this class doing bad. After that short speech, he sort of understood that I was trying extremely hard, yet nothing was working out. So he leveled with me. He gave me hints for the test, not exact answers, but he kind of gave me example questions that were very similar to the ones that he was going to choose on the test. So of course, my 66 went to like a 77 or an 80. Yeah, I got an 80 on some of those tests and I was proud of it for the first time in my life. Proud of an 80, are you kidding me? Anyhow, that 80 was enough to land a C in the class and my first C in college and in recent years leading up to that. So I was very disappointed with the C, yet also very happy that I didn't fail a class at the same time. And the one thing that kept my sanity up during that time was destiny and YouTubing. Just for like even an hour a day, I could hop on with my team of six friends, play some Clash and think of funny video ideas to do. So that way when it was the weekend, I maybe had an opportunity to edit a quick random Taj or something. And three years later, we're here. Cami Cakes Gaming, youtube.com slash. Yeah, that Rumble game could not have ended more perfectly at a time. 14 minutes in, don't forget Amazon Prime Day. Thank you guys so much for subscribing. And if you have any questions, do not hesitate to put them in my Ask FM, which will be in the description. Uh, those are more personal questions like what's my favorite color, and then send the serious questions to askcamicakes at gmail.com and I'll answer them. These were mostly first person shooter related, but of course I'll answer anything. See ya.